Hello there, this is Jasmine Clemente with Candle Chat. Today I want to speak about the two female rappers, Nicki Minaj and Cardi B. Everybody knows that they had a huge fight at Fashion Week 2018. It's big news right now. Um, but the reason why I want to speak about it is because I believe in spiritual warfare. Um, obviously, if you've been following Candle Chat, then you know that I am very spiritual. And I don't believe that people just do what they do for no reason without being influenced or maybe unaware influence is the same thing if you're not aware then you are easily influenced you can be easily influenced by other forces or other energies um but that's a little bit far-fetched for some people so um so as far as the argument between cardi b and um Nicki minaj this started a long time ago and then it turned into a fist fight at um, Fashion Week, where Cardi B was actually wearing Dolce and Gabbana, a you know very upscale gown, and left the actual event in scars and bruises and a ripped up dress. Um, so they say the reason why they had this argument or why it got so bad is because Cardi B just had a child; she just had a daughter in July, I believe it was, um, which was only two months ago, three months ago, maybe uh, more or less. And supposedly, Nicki Minaj, though they've been having disagreements for a very, very long time, the last straw for Cardi B was when Nicki Minaj was saying bad things about Nicki Minaj's mothering skills as far as being a parent. So that's when she said, you know what? This lady has been talking bad about me to other professionals in the industry, saying not to work with me. She's been taking jabs at me. But now that I'm a mother and she's talking about my parenting skills, it, this is just, it draws the line and it just, it's what pushed her over the edge. And some people are agreeing with Cardi B and they're like, yeah, you know, I'm a mother too. If someone talks about my child or my mothering skills, you know, yeah, I'm going to fight back. Um, so there's so much influence and power that, that comes along with celebrity fame that um, there's a big responsibility with that because there's other people that see your behavior and they may actually agree with it and then, and then continue that as well, especially younger women and younger females. So, you know, there's this, is it, is it lady like to fight? Is it not lady like to fight? Who cares? Do you have to always fist fight to get your point across? Um, is that the solution? So I want to talk a little bit about spiritual warfare because a couple of years ago, and I don't remember what year exactly it was, Nicki Minaj was at the Grammys doing a, um, doing a performance. It was the same night that Whitney Houston was actually pronounced dead in her hotel room from overdosing or drinking too much. We don't know uh, exactly what happened, but we know that there were some pills or, or some things in her bathroom. Now, Whitney Houston was on the road to recovery, and then she passed away that night. That same night that Whitney Houston passed away, during the Grammys, Nicki Minaj did a performance that was an exorcism on stage. I don't know if you remember this or not, but you can Google it. I'm sure it's still on YouTube. You can probably find the clips. She did this whole performance with like these red hoodies on stage, and it was basically like an exorcism. It was, it was like blas blasphemy. Now, granted, it's entertainment, right? And not everybody is religious, and not everyone is spiritual. Some people don't even believe that there is a God. Um, so, so in entertainment, it may be seen as art, um, especially if you're an atheist. But for those who are spiritual or who are aware of spirituality, because there's many different definitions and different beliefs, belief systems, one thing that we can agree on, right, is that there's an opposite in this world. There's duality. That's true. There's man and there's female. There's night and there's day. There's wet and there's dry, so on and so forth. There's good and there's evil. So with that being said, there's the extreme good and there's the extreme evil. So we may call that maybe God or we might call the extreme evil the devil, right? Whatever you call it, doesn't matter. It could be God, it could be Allah, it could be whatever. The devil could be Lucifer. There's different names for both of these entities or these opposing opposites. But we know that they exist just like the weather. You know, there's extreme heat and there's extreme cold. 
there are extreme energies out there that can influence us to be good or influence us to be bad. And a lot of the times you hear of these true stories like Charles Manson, the Amityville horror, sto uh, horror story, Poltergeist. These are all true stories with facts and, and evidence of possessions and real negative things that have happened. So there is a negative force out there and there are little demons that exist that can um, influence us. And it always starts off very small and then gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So um, if you're not aware and it starts off small, it will creep and get bigger and bigger. And you won't even realize that it's growing this negativity around you until something really horrible happens. And now boom, the devil won has won and it's like, yeah, you know, um, I took their shine away. I am killing them slowly. I am making them sick. I am, you know, making them lose their success. I am knocking them off their path. I am making them go crazy in the mind. I am making them insecure. You know, negativity is, is a whole bunch of bad things. There's different traits for negativity, but it will come. So right now, my question is, is Nicki Minaj and Cardi B having a spiritual warfare? You know, because we can say whatever we want to about who's right and who's wrong. But at the end of the day, does it really matter who started the fight, when it started, why it started, and who has the right to fight back and defend themselves? What if we just take a moment and breathe and say, hmm, observe. Is Cardi B perfect? Is Nicki Minaj perfect? No, they're human. Are, is their behavior really good right now for whatever reason? If it's not, and we can all agree that it's shaky, then they are being influenced by something negative, whether they're aware of it or not. And that's why we as observers, and even as fans, need to step back and instead of engaging in all of this gossip in a negative way and taking sides of who's right and who's wrong, maybe see the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is that just like God works in mysterious ways, so does the devil. And what is the devil? What is demonic forces? What is that? It's, it is egoic. It's narcissistic. If you've ever seen The Devil's Advocate, I think it was with um, Al Pacino. I forget which actor it was. But if you've seen The Devil's Advocate, you know what I'm talking about. In the end of the movie, he says, vanity, my favorite sin. Have you ever um, watched the movie? If you've ever seen the movie, then you know what I'm talking about. So in the movie, The Devil's Advocate, the devil is a lawyer. He, uh, he takes form as, as a lawyer. So evil evil is an extreme of selfishness an extreme of vanity of jealousy of bullying of confusion of intimidation intimidating you so with these female rappers um with the with rap in general you know, whether and we're not talking about conscious rap or conscious, conscious artists, right? Because Common is a conscious artist. He's a conscious rapper. Nas, to some extent, is also a conscious rapper um, because he elevates a lot of people in his, in his lyrical delivery with the stories that he tells through his lyrical deliverance. Not everything. He can be gangster too, but he does elevate people. But for the most part, a lot of rappers... Um, because of where they come from, they come from the hood, they are used to this culture of being aggressive because in order to survive in their environments, they can't be um, seen as weak because people will test you, they'll push you, they'll push you, they'll push you. And so to defend yourself, you have to fight back. And as you fight back, then you win respect from other people and then they, eventually they stop messing with you. But it's almost like they come at you to, um, to test you and to mold you into this aggressive person. So a lot of rappers that come out of the hood um, and, they're, and they're telling stories about 
their lives, that aggression follows them through Hollywood because that's what makes them um, a successful rap artist. So you have female rap artists, you have male rap artists. We all saw what happened with Biggie Smalls and Tupac. They ended up dead. Both of them shot. Um, even though it was horrible, it changed the rap game a little bit, but not that much because then you had 50 Cent who rose up to fame and he was shot nine times and now he was respected by the community. Like, yeah, he's a real gangster. Um, talented, absolutely. The, the rap is like poetry in a sense. Um, the way it rhymes and, and the, the description that they say with their words, it is a talent, definitely a talent. But there's aggression and there's a negative intention that comes with it from where they've been rooted from. Now, this can go deep, 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 deep. I'm getting really deep. I don't want to get too deep, though. Um, but now you have the female rappers who are like the male rappers. But, of course, there's a little bit of a difference because females are females and males are males. So is a woman going to take out a gun and shoot another woman? We don't know. It, it, it can happen, but you don't hear about it as much. You hear more of men that will shoot you um, like Tupac and Biggie Smalls that ended up um, dead from bullet wounds. Now, with Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, how is this going to end? They had a fist fight at Fashion Week. What's going to happen next? Is this going to resolve it? Or is it going to get worse and worse and worse? And my whole point is, when dealing with conflict, are you dealing it, are they dealing with it from a higher perspective or from a lower vibration? So, because before a conflict gets so bad, there's always room for it to kind of stop, right? What you feed grows. What you don't feed starves. So just like Tupac and Biggie, it kept getting worse and worse and worse until someone was dead. So with Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, even though, let's just say that Nicki Minaj kept jabbing and jabbing at Cardi B. Let's say she kept on doing that. When is it time for Nicki to fight, I mean, for Cardi B to fight back? Should she even have done that? Does it really make a difference? Does it make it better or does it make it worse? So there was something else I wanted to say about spiritual, okay, the law of attraction. The reason why I say it's a spiritual warfare is because even if, let's say, Nicki Minaj was the one who was victimizing Cardi B and, and coming at her and coming at her. Cardi B is already a certain persona. She's saying certain things in her rhymes that make her out to be a certain way, whether it's true or not, if it's entertainment or if it's reality. She's attracting to her what she is. They're both female rappers. Doesn't mean that all female rappers are talking about negativity, but that's just one similarity that they have, right? They're both female rappers. What else do they have in common? Because the law of attraction says that like attracts like. So we can't completely look at Cardi B like, oh my God, I feel so bad because, you know, I don't blame her for getting mad and, and flipping out. And yeah, I would have done the same thing. She's attracting this experience into her life. Because we attract everything that happens to us. Okay. Negativity cannot come unless it's invited in. If you really understand evil and you've ever watched vampire movies, for example, they can't come in unless you invite them in. Now, they will do things to seduce you and to trick you. They may come in the form of an angel, and then you invite them in thinking that it's good, and then boom, now they got you. So there's trickery in that. If you're living from a spiritual place and you really understand your spiritual principles, it's less likely for you to be fooled. Although you still can, of course, but it's less likely for you to be fooled because you will have spiritual protection. Your aura is way too bright and you repel negativity. You repel it like a magnet, like a magnet, a magnet that attracts positivity. It also can repel negativity. If it's not a match, it's not going to attract. So instead of looking at this whole Nicki Minaj and Cardi B thing, like we're taking sides, we have to understand that there's something bigger going on here and see how we can learn from their mistakes. 
instead of taking sides, because that's actually feeding the wolf when we take sides. Now, there are times that I'm not going to lie that I've sort of taken sides. I've had someone that I felt was I favored more a little bit than the other. But, at the, but you really can't. Because the more facts that come out, the more that you learn about both of these women, you go, you know what? Like, for example, Cardi B, she's very young. She's in her 20s still. Nicki Minaj, she's in her 30s, so she's older. But Cardi B is, like, really, like, loud and aggressive and stuff. But Nicki Minaj is too, but I wouldn't say as loud as Cardi B. Nicki Minaj is a little bit more in the, the artistic realm of being loud through her music, where Cardi B is, is like that for real, for real. Um, and some people respect that. They're like, oh, Cardi B is real. That's what, you know. What is real, though? Real, there, it's, everyone is different. If a person is not loud and bold to everyone else, that doesn't mean they're fake. It just means that their reality is, I don't want to behave that way, to be loud and bold. So it's not that being loud and bold is keeping it real. Real is real. And real is different for everyone. It really is different for everyone. So there's good and there's bad in both women, but they're both human. And because they're both human, they are both susceptible to negative forces. Now, again, I'll bring it back to Nicki Minaj when she did this exorcism on stage. When I saw that, I was like, oh my God. Like that's, I hope she realizes that she's playing with fire fire. Those are one of my candles right there. <laughs> um, and again, it's art. But you have to be careful with what you're attracting into your life. Because shortly after that, when she performed that exorcism on stage, if you notice, little by little, she started to eventually dwindle out. And then Cardi B came, and now she's the big rapper, female rapper. And that's another story of why is there only room for one female rapper and you can't have a few of them at the same time, but there's always this competition that's evil as well. Competition can be very evil because you're trying to knock somebody out so you can take all the shine. And that's a narcissistic trait to knock someone else out of the way. And narcissism is evil, right? Narcissism is evil. Narcissism doesn't want other people to shine. They want all the limelight for them. And Hollywood is all about that, right? Hollywood is all about who's on top, because if you're not on top, they overlook you because they're busy, it's a business, and they have bills to pay, they have commercial ads, they need to keep the um, ratings high. So if you're not the hottest thing right now, they're not gonna jump on you. And so when people are used to being in that number one spot, and now all of a sudden they're in the number 10 spot or number 20, they can be, scared and afraid for um, their career, like what's happening to me now. Hollywood is, um, is all about narcissism, not completely 100%, but a, a lot of it is, we know that, right? So being a human being and being an artist um, at any level of fame, we cannot become so dependent on our careers. Everyone has their turn, you know? whether you're the best female rapper one day and then the next day you're not, or the number one actress and the next day you're not, um, number one film director, the next day you're not, your business is doing great, one year it's not, the next year it picks up again. Everything has its turn, right? Sometimes we do a best-selling album and then the next album flops, but then we make a comeback. So there's a the, everything has its turn. And sometimes we get into our heads, we're in our ego, and we feel like we always have to be on top. And people do ugly things at the top to, to keep their position. But that is a trait of negativity. It's a trait of evilness. And the most important thing is our peace of mind and our spiritual health. Because the devil is ugly. Like, it will come into your life little by little, but then it will eat, 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 eat you like a parasite until it completely kills you. And it happens so slowly that you don't even realize it's happening. One thing that I found interesting 
was a clip of Nicki Minaj after the fight. And she was taking paparazzi pictures like she was the queen and she had um, won. You know, like she was the, uh, the winner. That was interesting to me. Now it is entertainment. I get it. I get it. It's entertainment. And entertainment loves controversy because look, I'm talking about it now. And there's a million podcasts and a million shows right now talking about it. So it does work. But good always wins. Because what's negative has to come up to the surface to be realized because knowledge is power. Once you know what the problem is, now you can change it. So that eruption between those two women had to come up. So we can talk about what's happening. And so we can change the era of our ways as human beings. We need to recognize what is evil and what is good. We need to recognize when these little demonic forces are influencing us and influencing them at the top and judging other people and saying, well, they're stupid or they're this or that we're, we're adding fuel to the fire. We're just as bad. So we need to stop and say, wait a second. Evil is bad. Evil kills. Evil takes people's careers away. Evil can make you sick mentally, financially, physically. Evil is a bad thing. It separates people. It causes war and stress from the entertainment world to the global world. Evil is in everything. But if you can see it before it grows, then you can repel it like a positive light. Because we all come from the light. Now, evil is there, right? It's we live in a world where there's the yin and the yang. There's darkness and there's light. There's man and there's woman. So there's two opposing forces, negativity and positivity. It will be there. The point that I'm trying to make is to recognize it when it's there, to be aware of yourself. So that way, that negativity doesn't penetrate within you and have you doing things that makes you crazy, that makes you look crazy, and now... You're in a situation like Cardi B and Nicki Minaj are in because they simply could have, this, this could have been something that didn't have to get so bad. I'll give you an example. And I have tourmaline here that protects you from negativity. Whoever threw the first punch, and I don't know who it was, they didn't have to. They didn't even have to engage back verbally. They could have just ignored it literally ignored it. And some people think that if you ignore something that makes you weak, but it doesn't. You starve it. And eventually it will go away or it will find a different victim. If someone is picking on you and they know that they're getting under your skin, they're going to keep on doing it because they know that it's getting under your skin. They're getting results. But if it doesn't bother you, and you don't entertain it, it will fade away. You can't tell me that Cardi B was really silent the whole time and only decided to fight back during fashion week. That's not true. That is not true. They, this has been going on for a while and we know that. She could have just let it go a long time ago. And whatever made Nicki Minaj attack her mothering skills. So if people don't like you, they don't like you. Ignore it. Ignore it. Ignore it. If you're in a situation where people are talking bad about you, gossiping, let it go. Don't feed it. Don't feed it. Eventually they'll talk about someone else or they'll get into something else. Let it go. If you are going to fight and use that negativity to defend yourself, do it because God forbid someone is trying to rape you and you have to fight them off with all your power. Do it because God forbid your child is being physically attacked by someone else and you need to defend your kid to make sure that they, you know, survive and, and, and you, and you, do you, you, you throw yourself in the middle so your kid is okay and safe. 
but the baby wasn't being attacked, like physically attacked or, you know, th there was nothing. The baby is not even six months old yet. What can anyone say bad about a baby? And even if they, and even if people do talk bad, you know, people used to say things about Whitney Houston's baby and Beyonce's baby um, when they were infants. And people will say cruel things that are horrible about how they look and, you know, what baby is really a beautiful baby and what baby is an ugly baby. You can't control with what everyone says. And especially when you're a celebrity, everyone, millions of people are going to talk. You need to have thick skin. And more so than the thick skin is the spiritual, the spiritual capacity to know what is negative and to know what is positive and to have compassion and ignore the negativity. Ignore it. Not every battle is worth fighting. Not every single battle. Some battles, yes, they're worth fighting. Not every single battle. If you fight every single battle, you're going to be exhausted. So choose your battles wisely. Again, if God forbid someone was breaking into your home, if someone was trying to rape you or rape one of your children or hurt them, you know, like physically hurt them, there are things where you need to, you know, um, you have to be strong and defend yourself and, and, and fight and do what's right. But not every single battle calls for it. Know which ones are worth it. And also know that like attracts like. So if something is bothering you, you call that into existence. So that's my opinion for the day. <laughs> um, I do believe in spiritual warfare. Um, be careful. Definitely be careful with, um, with what you play with. You know, they say, for example, witchery, right? Not to play with oracle cards and, and um, spiritual di di divination tools, divination tools. I do work with oracle cards. The thing is, if you're doing it in a way where you don't understand what you're getting yourself into, then yes, the devil can come in and hurt you. But if you do understand and you know and you have strong spiritual power, then, then it can't hurt you. Because remember, we can be powerful witches and warlocks. You know, don't be afraid of your power. Don't be afraid of the spiritual power of invoking angels. There are little demons out there, but there's also angels out there. Angels don't want you to be afraid to use your spiritual power or have your spiritual knowledge. Okay. So um, be careful though, when, when working with negative forces and you know what it is, it's like doing an exorcism on stage. You know that that's not the most positive show that you can put on earth. <laughs> so, and then if your career starts to dwindle down a little bit after that, it's just be careful, just be mindful, you know, just be mindful of what you're playing with when you're playing with fire. Just be mindful. I do have Oracle cards here. I'm just going to pull one out randomly. I want to see what it says to end this segment, um, since it is about spiritual warfare and these Oracle co uh, cards are called Oracle of the lights. I'm sorry, keepers of the lights. And there are different deities from different cultures around the world. So it's not just Catholic. It's um, Egyptians, aliens, angels, um, Indian goddesses and, and gods. Um, so it's a mixture, a mixture. Because I do believe in, I love humanity, people from all walks of life, all walks of life. So, um, so let's see what the cards say. I'm just going to pick one. How do we leave this off with? There we go. This is the last card. Mm. Archangel Michael. So that happens to be a, a Catholic one, even though there's different cards in here. Archangel Michael, trusting heaven. You are safe. Angels stand close. Surrender your concerns and allow a miracle to occur. So Archangel Michael is a fighter, and I was talking about that. He, um, he comes in as an angel to, to defend so Archangel Michael came out and that was beautiful. So this confirms to me that there is a spiritual war going on. There is definitely a spiritual war going on. So we need to see what is negative so that way we can repel that negativity spiritually, spiritually repel it. Okay, so it doesn't get worse and worse and worse. 
because the devil knows our weaknesses, just like God knows our weaknesses. God knows our, our he created us, but the devil is, is just as, almost just as big as God, right? That's what they say. They're like, in a way, they're competitive if you were to look at it that way because they're opposing forces. So even, they even say that when you pray, not to say it out loud sometimes or to keep it to yourself or because the devil hears everything that God is hearing as well. That's another story, though. I believe that you can speak things into existence. Don't be afraid that evil hears the same thing that, that good is hearing. They, they both are going to hear. But when you're really spiritually strong in your energetic field and your vitality and your love and your wisdom and your understanding for your higher purpose, evil cannot touch you. Okay? This is confirmation. This is Archangel Michael. So... This is tourmaline. I wanted to have this on the show. Um, tourmaline is for protection. So, all right. Well, thank you for tuning in to Candle Chat. You can continue to follow me on www.hometomysoul.com. Thank you so much for watching. Namaste.